Hey guys, welcome to part two of uh, my tutorial series on the M class uh, in Reason. Uh, today we're going to go over the stereo imager. And um, two days ago, last episode was uh, EQ. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description um, so you can watch part one. And yeah, um, sadly, I don't have a joke for you uh, right now. So here's a funny picture. It's funny because it's a cupcake. Anyway, let's get on to stereo imaging. So last time, we added EQs onto each of the tracks to make uh, the track more high quality. Th let's take a listen to what we have so far. Okay, so... First, I'm going to slap a stereo imager on the master to show you what stereo imaging does. If I play the track, you can see over here in the bands, little LED lights going on. That means that frequencies are reaching the lows and the highs. Now, there's a low band, X over frequency, and a high band. The, uh, what a stereo imager does is it takes this audio signal and splits it into two bands, low and high. The band is determined. The bands are determined by the X over frequency. Anything to the left of the knob will go to the low, and anything to the high, or to, sorry, to the right will go to the high. If I were to uh, solo the lows, you can instantly hear just just low end. But if I move it to the right here, it's still soloed on low, but if I move it to the right, it's determining that everything is on the low band. And that's not obviously what we want. That's just an idea of um, what you can do with the X over frequency here, and what it does. If I go back to normal. Why would uh, we do this, though? Uh, it's very it's very helpful for mastering. What you usually uh, want to do, not just for mastering the overall track, but for individual tracks, is uh, make the lows more mono and the highs wider. This is because uh, making the lows more mono gets the lows out of the way, but it still makes them very prominent. And uh, making the highs wider makes it more of um, more of a spread to the track, and it, and it sounds better. Now you want to be careful with this because you can go way overboard very easily. But what we're going to do is we're going to slap the, we're going to keep this onto the master. We're going to solo the low band, and we're going to try to determine by ear what we think the lows are. Where do they start? Generally, they usually start between 150 and 350 or so. This is all up to ear, though. I'm going to say the lows start about here, 263, something like that in this track, varies from track to track. Now, uh, if we listen to, if we solo the highs, you can just hear the highs, there's no low end. Let's go back to normal. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the lows, the low width, all the way to the left. You may not be able to notice a huge difference. Yeah, not much of a difference. But it will help um, in the whole mastering phase. And we're going to do this into individual tracks as well. Now we're going to make the highs a little bit wider. Let's solo the high band just so we can hear it. And now, if I move it all the way to the left, now it's very mono. That doesn't sound good. If I move it all the right, way to the right, wow, that's just too much, <laughs> as you can hear. So you want to find the, the sweet spot. I say, in this track, generally, I want to go probably about 14. And now let's go back to normal. Now you can see that uh, any any uh, LED lights that go uh, around here, that means it's wide. The green means it's mono, so that's perfect. That means the low band is completely mono right, mono right now. If I take it off, there it's it's not mono, as you can see. So that's perfect, and the wide and the highs are wider, which is exactly what we want. So that's how you would do it on mastering. Uh, hopefully I explained it correctly. I wanted to explain it on the master instead of an individual track because it um, you can easily notice the difference. So let's move on to a few other techniques I like to use this for. 
So other than using stereo imaging when mastering a track, I like to use it on individual tracks. As you can see, I added one here, and all I did, you know what, I'll just delete it and start again. All I did was solo this guitar. Oops, sorry. Put a stereo imager in there. And as you can see, a lot of tracks don't even hardly need this, but I like to be safe anyway. As you can see, there's hardly anything going on here anyway. But, I like to be safe, so... Separate the loads. Make them mono. And then, as you can hear, making the wides wider does make a difference. But, uh, anyway, let's just put that up to about 18. And that's about as extensive as stereo imaging can get, honestly. It's very simple. There's not much you can do with it like you can EQ. Final technique I'm going to show you does involve the master once again. This is just, um, something I like to do when I'm, uh, right before the mastering phase. I'm going to solo the lows and find where they begin, like, uh, this is familiar, should be, we just did this. About again, about 300, something like that. I'll just say 263. And that's about it, frankly. All you want to do now is listen to how your lows are uh, interacting with each other, because sometimes when mastering, uh, lows can get very muddy, and it just, um, that can be a problem when uh, you're trying to make a track and it doesn't sound uh, professional. It's, you, a lot of times it can be because the lows are interacting with each other very uh, weirdly, and maybe there's not enough mono low end, or maybe there's too much going on, you know? It's hard to tell right now, because this is just the beginning, very beginning of a track. But that is one thing I like to do, and I would recommend trying it. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions or uh, suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments. And make sure to subscribe, because I'm going to be doing a lot of tutorials, I'm thinking. I'm really enjoying doing this. It's really fun. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.